Hi there, my name is Aaron Short. Welcome to my YouTube channel. <laughs> I had to turn off the AC. As you know, it's very hot around these parts these days. It's about 90 degrees, feels like 100. So uh, today is Thursday, June the 10th, only 12 days to my birthday, and gifts will be graciously received on my behalf. Any guitars are welcome, or amplifiers, or guitar modelers also welcomed. Thank you very much in advance. <laughs> hey, Bob Dobson, how you doing? Cheers, everybody. Now, it looks like tonight might turn into the modeler versus amp debate, because we have Dr. McFarland here and Defcon Clark. I'd actually love to know your thoughts, and I will kind of make it about that as well this evening. Cheers. Because this has been on my mind for a while. As you know, I've made many videos about the Helix and the Kemper and the Quad Cortex, and actually someone asked me on Sunday about the Quad Cortex. I'm happy to talk about that later on. But where do these real amps fit into this? Especially these boutique hand-wired amps. This is a this is a premium premium amp from Fender. This is hand-wired. That's another discussion to have. How does the hand-wired amp compare to the PCB version, which is half the price? I can't comment on that today because I haven't tried the other version. But I do like this amp a lot, and I'll talk about why I like it today. In regards to the modelers, I think that's worth talking about as well. Because today I am playing the amp through cab emulation. Um, everything you hear is from the amp. The effects are all from the amp. The amp is just going through two speaker emulators. So this is essentially like using a Helix or a, or a Kemper, some kind of emulation. I think it's a lot better. And when I say a lot better, I don't know. Maybe if you're listening on your iPhone at home, you're going to say, well, it just sounds like any clean amp, any clean sound from a computer, whatever. I will say this to, to start the, to the discussion. In the room, when you play the real amp, it just sounds incredible. It has this 3D type sound. And I saw in the blues talking about amps the other day, and he said it, they have a bloom. That's right. A real amp has this bloom to it, especially a tube amp. And... I've been thinking about this a lot lately, and I don't want to, I, I want to say this, I don't want to like old gear. I want to move on. I love many things about the modelers and the digital stuff for convenience. But the core amp tone of these, of these amps in the room is something, well, obviously, you're not going to experience it in the video today because you're not in this room, and I'm not even using the amp in the room. But I wanted to start with that. The amp in the room sound for me is incredible. And I have compared it to several other options the last few weeks, which I'm making a video about. And the amp in the room just completely slays them for me. It's, it's, it's a different experience. And then there's a whole argument about, well, if I use in-ears, what does it matter? That's fair enough. But if you're playing an amp in a room, I think that's an amazing thing. So this amp you're hearing today is going through emulation. The question then becomes, is it worth it if you're doing that? Is it a big, big enough step up? The price of this amp is more than a Kemper or more than a Helix with a PA speaker, which you could use at your shows. Of course, they then give you other flavors of amps. They give you effects. They give you a tuner. They give you all that stuff. I'm having to use the headstock tuner today, which I'm not a big fan of. But I have to because this amp only does one thing. This amp is not very loud. It has two effects on it. It's got a reverb and it's got a tremolo. It doesn't do anything else. So I guess that's what the debate is then. Is it worth having an amp like this over having a box that does a million things? Or should you have both and use the box that does a million things in conjunction with this amp? This could be a whole video. I did something similar to this uh, with uh, Dr. McFarland on his channel. Maybe we should get some of us together and have this discussion. I think it's kind of fruitless in a way because there is no answer, is there? Like, basically, it's the, the thing that does one thing does it very well, hopefully. And the thing that does a million things is a great tool, but it doesn't do that one thing really well. Another great video would be this amp, like I just played it, versus the Kemper, versus the Quad Cortex, all that stuff. But I'll give you a demo of this amp, what it does today. This is the hand and wire version. This is a 12 watt amp with a 10 inch speaker. So it is not going to do your metal and stuff like that. This is a classic amp sound, which, which is great at home. It's great for recording, things like that. So tell me what you think. Have you tried this? 
I'm, I'm, I'm actually quite shocked because I used to play real amps. I played the modelers for a long time. I'd forgotten what an, a good amp in the room sounds like. And I'm really, really enjoying I'm actually quite blown away at the difference. I love it. But of course, I just want to reiterate that a lot of people now don't use amps. They use in-ears. If you use in-ears, it gets a lot closer. But the amp in the room, the tube amp in the room for me is really it made me very happy lately. That's why I wanted to feature the amp today. So... Dr. McFarlane says, I prefer a Helix through studio monitors. I don't know if he's kidding or not, but check out his channel because he's a cool guy. Are you going to Summer Nam, Dr. McFarlane? We just booked the trip, so that'd be cool to catch up there. Thomas Moore says, hi. Hi, Thomas. How you doing? Good to see you. Defcon Clark is here. Salutations. Are you going to Summer Nam? Let me know. State College PA, not too far from me. Very cool. Bob Dobson says, hello, Aaron and friends in the chat. I absolutely love my vintage Fender apps. Bob, what do you have? Do you have the Princeton? There was many versions, versions of the Princeton. If I do a full review of this for my channel, I'll be sure to put that research in there. But there's versions without the reverb that people say have more headroom. There's versions with the reverb. There's a 10-inch version. There's a 12-inch version. There's a 12-watt version. I think there's a 15-watt version. I put a link below to Sweetwater. If you click that, it shows you all the different versions that they have right now. Of course, over the years, there's been other versions and vintage models as well. Some people will say, hey, why buy this one I've got here when you could buy the vintage one, of course. You could actually just look for a real vintage Princeton. I'm sure that's got a lot of mojo to it, too. I'm interested to know if Bob Dobson has one. Thomas Moore has a Podgo and several amps. So, Thomas, what do you think when you play the Podgo versus you play the real amps? Do you, do you, do you have any thoughts on it? Do you think they're, I mean, some people say it's the same. Some people say it's different. Some people say it's different, but I want the flexibility of the modeler. What do you think? Not following how the emulation is set up. What do you mean, Thomas? Please explain that. Dan says New Jersey. Dan in New Jersey. Hey, Aaron, love these gear reviews. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, this is, um, like I said, this, this is more of a live um, hangout. On Sundays, I've got some questions about some gear, especially the Quad Cortex. I'm happy to speak about that after my review of the amp. I will probably do a full review of the amp in the future, so do subscribe and ring the bell. But this is really just my thoughts on gear. So far, it's been gear that I love, that I've used for a long time, that I want to kind of promote because I think it's great gear. But I will eventually maybe talk about other things that I don't think are as good as well. So just like a live hangout. Um... Bob says, as the tube seat up, you get tones not available from emulation. That is 50 years of gigging experience speaking. Yeah, there's something about the tubes. I was comparing some solid state gear this week, and it doesn't sound as good. I think the size of the cab is important. I don't think the size of the speaker is that important. I think the size of the cab, the box it's in, and the tubes make a difference. And like I said, I don't want to be a tube sniffer, like sound hole sniffer. I don't want to be that. I want to move forward. I love technology. I love my iPhones. I love all this stuff. But there is something about a tube amp in the room that you're right. It's it's unbeatable. I'm waiting for the day that they can beat that with a box. You know, I want to get a, a Kemper cabinet, plug in a Kemper, and get a sound that's better than a tube amp. I don't understand why we can't do that yet. I know it's a touchy subject, but it's got to be said. I'm waiting for that day to come. Thomas Moore likes the amp. That's cool. Now, the Pod Go does have a line out, doesn't it, and into an amp. You can actually plug that with one cable straight into your amp and use the Pod Go with it. It's very cool. So that's, that's good. Jacko says, if you're on the computer, go up and down on your thumbnail. It looks funny. <laughs> Why? <laughs> oh, because the amp has grills. I haven't done that yet. Okay. Poo Ninja. Okay. Amp in the room is hard to be. It is. Why is it so good? And, and it's funny, why did I forget how good it is? I used to play amps as a teenager. As a Yeah, I think as a teenager, I had a big old Marshall thing. Probably worth a lot of money now. I haven't got it anymore. Um, also had one of those Marshall Blues Breakers, which I sold real cheap when I came to America, which is now worth hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? In London, I had an orange Rocker 30, which had loads of problems. I never knew why. It was a good amp, but it had loads of problems. And then here I have the, the Synergy amp and the Fender amp. And, and yeah, now I'm doing these comparisons in this room. And of course, I can't have it that loud because I'm in, I'm in an apartment. Sorry, neighbors. Actually, no, I'm not sorry at all. But 
It does sound great. And it's actually funny. It'll sound real corny, but it's the sound that I've been looking for. It is. It's the sound I've been searching for. L last few years, like dialing in sounds, watching you tutorials on the Helix and the Kemper and making tutorials, looking to improve the sound. And don't get me wrong, I've got some good sounds out of those things. But when I play the real amp, it really kind of always surprises me how it has that sound. And the way I got to that is I went to a band rehearsal with a Helix and a power amp and a cabinet. And I played through that in the rehearsal. And it was sounding fine. Actually, the band said how good it sounded because I had all those effects. We, we were a three piece band, so I could add all those effects to make it more exciting, more interesting, which is really important. But what happened was I walked over. I'll never forget this. It's so sharp in my mind and I'm so bad with, with, um, with, with remembering things. I walked over to a Fender Twin. OK, a Fender Twin weighs about 100 pounds. It has two speakers in there. It's real powerful. OK, I get it. But I plugged into that thing and I played. And it just filled the room. It just kind of, like I said, bloomed. It just filled the room with sound and was so three dimensional and powerful. And I just turned to the drummer and said, man, that sounds so much fuller than the modeling stuff and the power and the solid state um, amp. And he said, yeah, it does. It's analog. So I don't know. Like I said, I'm not here to say at, um, tubes are better than modelers. I don't want to have an argument about it. It's just a fact, you know, that that stuff sounds so rich. And I wonder if they'll ever get to that point. I mean, I've tried the power cab. I've tried the Kemper cab. They're better, but they're still nothing like a tube amp. And I do hope one day I can come on here and say, I got this new box and it sounds better than my than my Princeton. I don't want to own a Princeton. It's I know it, tubes are a hassle. You've got to replace tubes. You've got to have the amp serviced. They're heavy. They're limited, but they sound so good anyway. You'll see what I mean. Remember, you're not even hearing the amp in the room today. You're simply hearing the amp into emulation into the stream. So I still think it sounds really, really great. I don't think I've actually tried recreating this sound. Well, I did a video about recreating the sound using um, tone match on uh, in logic but uh, I, I really should try to to profile and match this sound in the computer but just listen to that let's just jump over to the amp I wanted before I get too lost in my thoughts just listen to that real spring reverb look I'll start with it on 10 which is way too much but this is a real spring reverb let me mute the fan Now, what, now, maybe there's a part of me that thinks, well, that's real, so it sounds better than the other stuff. But I don't know. I, think, I just think it sounds really great. Um, I, I often talk on here about how stuff is psychological. I think maybe it is, you know. Oh, this is a hand-wired Princeton reverb with a real reverb tank. And it's a, it's a, a custom shop strap from Sweetwater. It must sound amazing. No. I mean, that, that does play a part and stuff, but just check that out. Here's, here's on seven. I should probably be real geeky and compare this to the... I've, I've got the FM3, I've got the Kemper, and I've got Helix Native. I should probably compare them. You know, I do that a lot, but all I can say is this. I... I I don't know if it's psychological or if it's better. Now I'm, now I'm completely ranting about real amps. And I guess I'm going to keep saying I'm not against any, I'm not like saying I've discovered tube amps and not playing anything else. But there is something very rewarding and satisfying for me. And I, like, I just think this sounds great. So here it is again. I'll bring it down now to five. I guess what I'm trying to say is this is kind of my new gold standard of tone, you know. I like that spring. 
I usually use a whole reverb, but I like the kind of messiness of it and splashiness of it. Obviously, that's a lot. Here it, here it is on three this time. You can see the, you just about see the controls on the amp. This is three. You know, I don't know if it's because it's real that I'm just really in, feeling inspired by it or if the fact it just sounds good. I don't know. You tell me and you tell me if you think if you think your head rush or your helix or whatever has a, such a good sound as that, if you think you can dial it in like that, then tell me. I won't be offended. I want to know. But I just think that's a great reverb. I think that's a great clean sound. Like I said, this amp is not perfect. You can't do metal on it. You're not going to... Um, take this to a gig and fill the room with sand with just the amp, you're going to want to mic it up or run it through some kind of box like I have the Captor X, you want, you want to use something like that to run it through front of the house. But this amp is quiet, it's light. Like Bob said, it does have a great smell, it does kind of burn up when you turn it on, you start, to, you start to smell it. At first I thought there might be a problem with it, but that's just what tubes do, they get hot. Um, it's also got the, what do you call it, the uh, tremolo, let's check that out. By the way, the two inputs on here, one is minus 6 dB on, on channel 2. Maybe you want to put input, sorry, input 2. Maybe input 2 should be for a Les Paul or something with harder pickups. These are just custom shop 69 pickups. They're very low output. So this is in input 1. Let me check out the intensity here. So speed is on 5. This is nothing. This is 3. Five. Actually makes me feel a bit seasick. That's how good it is. Seven. And ten. It makes me feel a bit nauseous. Or maybe that's the, the what I'm drinking, but now these kind of effects should be easy on a on a on a helix or something because it's it's a time-based effect right we're not talking about drive or distortion and stuff like that we're talking about like a like a, a warbling of the sound i'm probably going to get in trouble for saying that but this is the real deal it's nice i don't know if i would use it <laughs> while i play but I always think it's nice for the kind of uh, again I don't I wouldn't use that but that's what it sounds like and then I'll bring up the speed so it just makes it faster one thing I like about digital pedals is that you can tap tempo and everything syncs to that tempo with this thing you'd have to lean over and change it of course that's the problem with analog what you could then do is add a ton of reverb and that effect and get a very big kind of washy sound. Easy. <laughs> Let me turn that down. I usually leave it down like, on like two or three, that one, and the reverb down back three effect. Most things here I put on three, the bass, everything. The thing with this amp is it's quite a bright amp, so that the treble can get very bright, which I think people like from Fender amps. The volume could be an issue for some people. What happens is you get to three and a half. In fact, the funny thing with this amp is it doesn't really turn on at all. Like this is on one, right? So there's nothing. This is on two. Check it out. There's nothing, right? <laughs> so I thought this was broken at first. This is two and a half. So it kind of turns on at two and a half. This is three, which is kind of what I use it at all the time. And then once you get to kind of three and a half, four, it starts to break up. When you really 
dig in, it breaks up. I like that sound a lot, actually. I've been playing those kind of sounds a lot lately. Uh, this is five. This will start to get really broken up. Remember, these are low output pickups. If I was playing a Les Paul, it probably would have started to break up around f on, on volume three. This is only a 12 watt amp. It's okay because you can mic it at a gig. You can use an emulation like the Two Notes Captor X, but this is not a high headroom amp, okay? But then you might like that. It means you can play it at bedroom levels and still get the break up from the speaker, whereas other amps, once you turn them up, they just blow your head off. You can't even turn them up to one. They're blowing your head off straight away, so. You hear that glassy kind of just crunchy sound? That's the kind of classic sound, isn't it, on there? I'll just turn the level down on the computer because I want to bring it up to six. I think it starts to get unusable at these kind of levels. Can you hear this really, really cooking there? Hear that? Now that's cool because you could turn the volume down on the guitar to clean it up. So you have two sounds by turning the volume down. Once you get up to kind of eight, it's starting to get a bit ridiculous and kind of farty in my opinion. And of course on 10, I don't know, has anyone recorded these amps on 10? I don't know, but it sounds like this. Actually, I quite like it. It's kind of cool. <laughs> I can imagine something like... Uh... Kind of cool. You see, I love it. I love that it's real. I love that that reverb splash at the end was a real thing. I love that the, the drive is happening organically. Is that all just in my mind? Does that sound good? Or does it sound good? You tell me. And if it is in my mind, does that matter? That's really a question to think about. With gear, is a lot of it psychological with the gear? So yeah, I always look for that real clean sound like that, but just lately I've been playing more with that edge of breakup sound, and it's something I've never really done before. I think as an acoustic player, I've always kind of just tried to search for a sound that sounds like an acoustic, so when I'm in a band, I can kind of strum and get that kind of acoustic-y acoustic sound. I'm always looking for that, and that's great for that, but I'm really enjoying the Edge of Breakup sound. So you tell me what you think, because I'm really happy with it. I think this is a great amp. Like I said, I don't know if I'm going to recommend this. Would I get this one or the PCB version that's half the price? I don't know. I haven't tried it, but it's really hard to say something's worth twice the money. I'm sure, I'm sure the PCB version is fantastic as well. I'm sure the other iterations that they sell of this right now are also fantastic. All I can say is that I'm really, really, really happy with this amp. If I wanted to sit and play clean with no distractions, no apps, no USB problems, all this VS, then I'll just plug this in and I'll just play and I love it. And it works great at low volumes. Sometimes with an amp, I need to use an attenuator to bring the volume down because I can't even turn it onto one in the apartment. But this amp is great for that. Like, if you're looking for a practice amp or something to play around a, a, a studio apartment or something, this is great because you can use it at low volumes and you can take it to a gig. And there's no fan, there's no noises, there's no clicks or pops or weirdness. It's just a great, great, simple sound. And it's just fantastic to plug a great guitar into this amp and just play it for what it is. I, I, I'm kind of blown away, actually. All right, I'm going to go through the chat, so please let me know what you think. 
because your opinions are very important to me. So Defcon Clark might be at NAM for the last day. Well, I hope, let me know if you're going because um, I booked a trip. Just got to get my pass, and then I'm I'm hoping to uh, to be down there. I want to check out the Gibson Garage as well. They just opened that up. So Thomas Moore says, I prefer the amp in the room, but in one project I have going on, I use a pod go and use it through the PA. I have an older Fender concert and it's 60 watts. So 60 watts is great. I'd say for playing in a band, you want to get like 30 watts, 50 watts, 100 watts would be incredible. But that's if you want the sound to stay clean. Just in case anyone's watching that doesn't know, if you headroom is how loud can you play without the amp breaking up? So you saw on this amp the way it got to three and then started to get dirty and distorted. And a lot of people like that. But if you want an amp that stays clean, as you keep turning it up to 10, you need more watts. So a 100 watt amp, you could probably turn it up to 10 and it would stay clean, or at least it would get you a loud enough volume that would, and it would stay clean. So a 60 watt amp is very cool. Of course, the problem is with the more watts comes more weight and often more expense. But there we go. That's how it was with tube amps, or how it is with tube amps. So Thomas Moore, I completely agree with you. If I was in a band that was using in-ear monitors, or a lot of churches now are using in-ear monitors, a lot of Broadway shows are using in-ear monitors, I would never take a real amp, even if I thought it was 50 times better sounding, I would never take that and have them put it in the basement, mic it up, and run the sound into my in-ears. Unless I was Paul McCartney, I wouldn't do that. I can't see the point. I would definitely take a Podgo, I'd use good IRs with it, or I would use a Kemper, Quad Cortex is something I'll talk about later. I wouldn't use that yet because it hasn't got the software that I need. But I would definitely have no problem with playing a Podgo or a Helix. Actually, I prefer the Helix because it's got the longer IRs and stuff. But I would have no problem taking, say, let's say a Helix to a show like that and playing through it. Because it, the, the differences would be negligible. Differences would be very small. Okay? So, <laughs> so I can say that word, I promise. But in the room, there's just no comparison. Now, I've tried the Power Cab, I've tried the Kemper Cab, I've tried the Seymour Duncan Power Stage. It's just absolutely shocking how incredible the tube amps are in the room. And like I said, I want us to get to that place with the modelers, but it's incredible. The day they give me a modeler that can make that sound, even if it's a proprietary cabinet that they sell me, like a Power Cab, if they can give me something that does that and gives me the sound of this amp, even though I know mentally it's not the real thing, I'll still, I'm okay with that, that's fine. But these amps still sound incredible. So I agree. And a lot of bands in New York actually use real amps. I was very shocked to see that when I did a wedding two years ago, it's about two years ago now because of the pandemic, but I did a, a wedding band. And the way they run is that you'll show up and they'll just play. They don't rehearse, they, they do nothing like that. They literally put the members together, you show up and you play the gig. And I ran the PA, because I own the PA, so they, paid, they hired me to run the PA and be the male singer. So I did that. But the thing is, I noted at that gig, the, sax, well, the saxophone player plugged straight in, expected me to have monitors, which I had. The um, keyboard player brought their own PA speaker. And the, the bass player brought their own bass amp. And the guitarist brought a pod HD something for effects and ran into two cabs on stage, like solid state cabs or whatever they were but everyone had their own amp so in that respect i was certainly would take an amp because if you need to take some kind of speaker to hear yourself anyway then why not just take an amp right again that's what a guy was saying on youtube the other week i had a camp there i had a, I had a pa speaker to hear myself and i realized well i'll just take my pedal board and my real amp what's the point of taking something that's the same size as what i'm replacing totally get that and i I think a lot of bands still operate that way because it's very hard to use in-ears in a live situation if you don't work with those people on a regular basis. But like I said, if you play in a church or a regular band that uses in-ears, then that's a different story and there's no point taking a, an amp, an isolation box, a microphone. There's just no point. It's a, it's, 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 it would never be worth it, would it? So I, I totally agree. And Thomas Moore says, I've been using a Vox AC10 with a small pedal board live. Sounds great. There you go. Yeah, that's how I feel lately. I don't use many effects. I just need a drive, a heavier drive, a, a solo boost that raises the whole volume, a delay, and a reverb. 
So therefore, all I really need is a is a good amp. I'm I'm looking to get a hundred watt amp in the future. A hundred watt amp and a little pedal board, and especially if the amp had a built in IR loader or something, I would just be I'd be swimming. I'd be so happy with that. I wouldn't need anything else. Again, some cover bands have a different preset for every song. They need pitch shifting. They need all these weird and wild effects to recreate the songs faithfully. Again, that's another reason for using a multi effects either with an amp or by or standalone by itself. But I again, I'm being selfish by talking about myself, but that's what my channel's about. I don't need those things. I just need a great bass tone with some variation. So that's why I'm enjoying this uh, amp right now. So Dan says you have to recap the old ones anyway. Why not get the newer one? Well, that's a good point again about the amps, isn't it? You mean recap, you mean you have to maintain the amp. Yeah, if you buy the vintage amp, which is the same price, it's, it's going to be rusted, worn, damp, you know, used, might need some servicing. That's a reason I don't like buying vintage gear or even used gear. You never know where it's been. With something brand new, you get kind of best of both worlds, right? You get something that's hand wired at Fender and also brand new. I think that's cool. Again, the topic of is the hand wired version worth twice the price of the non hand wired version? I'd only know that if I bought the non hand wired version. And I don't think I want to do that just to make a video. But that would be a that would be the only way I could I could tell you. Um, I don't know. I don't know. But I agree. When you buy vintage, buy carefully because if you get it and it's full of problems, it could cost you more than you spent on it. Podgo sounds great in the PA, but harder to change on the spot. Also, don't like it through the front of the amp. Oh, I haven't tried it through the front of the amp, Thomas. But yes, I agree. It's harder to change than the, the physical pedal or the amp. I can just reach to the amp and change something, right? And of course, on the flip side of that, I can't store presets, which is a nice thing to have. I think I disagree about sounding great in the PA. Well, maybe it sounds great in the PA in the way that when you're listening at home to a YouTube video, many things sound great. But the problem is for me, it, and I don't like that whole thing of feel, but that, that, is, that is what I'm going to say. The feel, I don't know about this feel. I, don't, I never think that I'm a good enough player to talk about feel and things like that. But for me, the feel is that, like I said, that, um, that bloom and that 3D full sound. I don't get that from the other stuff. I was playing the Kemper today, and it, yeah, you're right, it sounds great, but it doesn't give me any kind of feeling. It doesn't give me any feeling. Well, that's the feel, I guess, right? The feeling. It doesn't, it doesn't inspire me, is what I'll say. It doesn't inspire me at all. It just sounds dead to me. There's something about playing the real amp, and I'm sure actually a vintage amp does have that mojo as well, where you just know you're playing something vintage, and it's the original and it's cool, but I also think it sounds fuller as well. I don't know why. Can someone tell me? Like why do why do the tube amps sound so 3D? What what is it? What do they do? Is it because the sound is kind of radiating from everything? Or is it and, and with the with the PA speakers you're just getting like a flat sound coming out? I don't know. I wish I knew. I wish I was more, you know, clued up with that kind of thing. Small amps are easy to carry. I totally agree. I once tried a 212 cab and I vowed after one gig never to take it again. I was using a 212 cab with a power amp and a helix and I, I still didn't work for me. I still think you need the tube power section and that thing was so big. So now I have a 112. I have two one single cabs now and I just I, I would I haven't done a gig with them yet, but I would take one or I would take two. But carrying a 212 cab around is a lot of um, hassle, definitely. Yeah. You gotta think about convenience as well. You do. Mike, hi Mike. I have a 65 twin reverb. I bet that thing sounds incredible, right? Great chimey tones and works well with some of the pedals I use. But Mike, doesn't it? I just imagine I said the story, I don't know if you heard it, about the rehearsal I did. A 65 twin reverb, you plug into that thing, it just has to sound incredible. It's two speakers, it's 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 a load of headroom, it's big, it just fills the room. That would be another good test, actually. A twin, a twin reverb original versus the solid state they make now would be a really, really cool comparison. Again, I won't pass judgment on that kind of stuff until I've tried it. But so far, I feel there's something in the tubes that really sounds great. Do you remember when Line 6 made a tube amp that you would connect to your Pod HD? So your Pod HD would go through the tube section of a real amp? I mean, why did they stop doing that? 
Two Ninja, Super Twin Reverb, 120 watts of crazy clean light, 212. Yeah, exactly. But it weighs it weighs so much you would never take it to a gig. So you get to the stage where it's like, look, it's just I'm not it's not practical. So what I would like is a hundred watt head. I was looking at the J the J, the JP Mesa head, 100 watts, three channels. I think that's that's kind of the sweet spot. And and it's like 40 pounds. You can carry that head to the gig. It might be less actually. But a twin reverb combo, you're talking about 100 pounds. It's just it's, or 80 pounds. It's just not. It's not something anyone's going to do, I don't think. I wouldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I couldn't lift that. <laughs> so Thomas Moore has the 550 Mesa Boogie and run the pod through effect. And it sounds good, right? I plugged the FM3 into the effects loop of my Synergy amp, and it sounded really good. I definitely think it's the tubes that sound good. Yeah. Bemo says, I can't live without an amp. Yeah. I don't know how I did for so long. I was a fool. I was missing out. And again, that's just my opinion, right, um, Defcon? Just my, just my opinion. Bob Dobson says, played my vintage Fenlux reverb and an early 70s Ampeg VT22 amp with the six 10-inch speakers for a street dance last Saturday night. All the speakers pushed the time exactly. It's like you, you just you just plug in, you start straight in, and you just play. Oh, excuse me. You just plug in and you just play, and it just. You feel it, right? It just like inspires you, I bet. Yeah. And if you mic it up through the PA as well, even better. So Poo Ninja mostly plays through a tiny Bluetooth speaker, Pod HD 500X, because I don't want to disturb the family. Well, that's the thing. I really did enjoy those. I don't have them anymore, but I really enjoyed those Boss Bluetooth Wazza headphones that I reviewed. I really enjoyed them. They gave me that 3D sound somehow that I miss. But then once we went into lockdown, I used these in ears so much and got so used to them that I didn't, I actually sold those. I didn't use them anymore, but they had more of that 3D sound to them. They were good. They were good. And I can sit now and play through headphones. I'm okay with it. But I still think I prefer the real amp through the headphones than the emulation through the headphones. But I would never bother taking the amp to the gig just for that extra, you know, 20%. I just wouldn't bother, but... If I'm at home and I can play my real amp through the through the simulation, I'll do that. Like, or I'll play the real amp whenever I can because I love it. So today I was using the uh, the Helix through the effects loop, not four cable method, but just through the effects loop of the amp, and it was just no, not this amp, my my synergy, and it just sounded great because I had the delays and the reverbs, but I had the real amp sound. So I was using kind of delays and reverbs and tuner from the Helix, and I was using all the drive from the amp itself, and it sounded really good. I think the hybrid is a good way to go. Let me come back over here. In fact, let me just do this in case anyone forgot to do it. Okay. <laughs> awesome. I'm glad, yeah, I'm, not, I'm actually really happy. I didn't know I'd have so many amp fans. I didn't know so many people were still fans of amps. And it makes me feel good. Not that I need to be justified in my decisions, but it does make me feel good to know that it's not just me. And uh, maybe I never should have stopped ha owning an amp in the first place. So, that's cool. BMO says I cannot live without an amp. Bob Dobson played my vintage Fender Lux reverb and early. Seven oh, yeah, you said, yep. Great, great, great. I'd love to hear that in person. Thomas Moore used to have a VT22. What's that? It was great. We have the V4, which is way big, too big to use now. I'm, I'm glad you're using both, Thomas. I think that's the great, a great way to go. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like Helix Native for recording is incredible because you can record your guitar dry and then do the amps. And, and if you want to change something, you can just change it. That's incredible. That's an incredible tool. But that's recording, right? That's not playing in the room or live. Um. Thomas Moore have two cabinets with four twelves in it. I need a two note to be able to use the basement. Yeah, you should get one. They're cool. Use the V four for years. Not about volume. It's about feel. Yes, I agree, Poo Ninja. I will say this. I I think that you need a certain amount of volume with anything to get the feel. Like I could play a tube amp at really low volume, and it sounds a bit crappy. And I could play a Helix at really low volume, it sounds a bit crappy. There's a certain volume where both of those things improve 
for me to play. And there's definitely a sweet spot. That's why it drives me crazy when I'm playing a gig, even an acoustic gig, and they'll come over and say, can you turn it down? Because they often make you, make me turn it down so much that it's like you can't quite feel, like you say, you can't feel the music, and it's just, you just want to go home. There's a volume, I'm not talking about raging loud volume, but there's a volume where you, or where I certainly just, I can just, like you say, feel and get into the music. There is a sweet spot, definitely. Um, Thomas Moore says, I'm debating getting an HX effect so I can use it with the amp better. I don't like the pod go in the amp. I have an M9. I mean, they're similar. The only reason I would get the HX effects is because it has the um, switching to change the channels on your amp. And it has the scribble strips. Yeah, if you're just using it with the amp, I would get that one. Podgo, you could almost make it work the same. And it's got the foot pedal on there that for the wah-wah and stuff. I don't know. For me, a three-channel amp, like a three-channel 100-watt amp with the, with the HX effects, for me, is kind of ideal. It's quite a small rig, tons of power, lots of flexibility. I would probably use a real drive tube screamer in front of it, and maybe a real wire in front of it, and then plug the HX effects into the back. Use that for delays, reverbs, chorus, tuner, and amp um, switching, channel switching. I think that's really the best of both worlds. I would rather have a huge pedal board made by someone custom with all real pedals on it, but then again, you're getting to that point where you're like, well, that's thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars, tons of weight, hassle to power, all this kind of stuff. It's not, I don't think it's worth it. I know I said I like the reverb on this amp, but I'm, I'm not too bothered about like a delay. Like I don't mind a delay being from a, most delays are, are digital anyway, right? So I don't mind my delays coming from the from the from the helix, but I want the actual core sounds to come from the real amp. But again, that's just me. So, and M9, I used to have the M9 too. Yeah, the HX effects is basically the new M9, isn't it? But with six, is it six buttons or eight? I can't remember. But yeah, that would be a good upgrade. I I feel. Yeah, so Bob agrees with me. Round tones, tubes versus flat tones, emulation. Just my real world live gig experience. Yeah, that's exactly what I found, Bob. I'm glad you agree. I'm waiting for someone to say they disagree, and that's fine too. Because like I said, I don't want I don't want to like this amp. I want to just take a quad cortex to a gig and own nothing else. That's what I really want. But it's a, for me, it's just not there yet. And I'm only saying that to help people that are currently deciding what to purchase because I have been quite an advocate for that stuff and I do think it's great but I don't I want people to make sure that they don't overlook the old way as well Dan says thank you for having the guts to tell like it is there's nothing like a tube amp for tone Hedgeman feel love my box and fender Dan but like I said what I don't want to do is come on here and kind of be preachy and say this is the way and everyone's wrong I don't want to do that it's just simply my experience. I was working on a video where I was comparing solid state and emulations to real amps, because now I have a couple of real amps, and I was actually just shocked. I was honestly, and this is my, again, just my opinion, I was just shocked at how rich and great the real thing sounds. And like I said, what, all I really want is for the emulations to, to get there. Of course, they'll never be like an amp in the room because they're not. They're the mic sound that we're hearing. But I wish someone would make something like a like a quad cortex that also can be connected to a box which weighs 10 pounds and gives me the amp in the room feel. And I don't feel anyone's done that yet. On the other hand, am I just the boomer, an old guy now, because my birthday is coming up? Am I just a grumpy old man that's saying, well, the tube amps are better? And do the kids now that are 17 learning guitar, having never played an amp, is it better for them to play emulation maybe it is maybe i'm just being old-fashioned i don't know i'm open to suggestions thomas moore says i wonder how the princeton compares them in the helix right so i did a video on tone matching a few months ago where i recorded this princeton and i eq matched it in logic and i thought they got real close and i was really happy with that video it's on my channel if you want to check it out but nothing it made it closer, closer, but nothing that I've done so far has ever made me say, well, that sounds better, or it sounds absolutely identical. And if it has, it's taken me hours to get there. 
So I don't think I don't think this that will sound as good as this. Of course, if we're going if we're going to compare for anyone watching looking to buy an amp or a Helix, don't forget the Helix does a million other things, including the washing up. The amp only does that one thing, and it can't be programmed. So they are completely different solutions. If you can use them both together, that's cool, and I think a lot of people are doing that now. Um, and I'm going to say it again to, to, to not sound like a broken record, but there's just something really cool about having a real Princeton that you're playing through. It's just, you know, I'm not playing through a box of electronics. I'm playing through a real thing. There's something cool about it. I've, I've, when I was a kid watching bands play, they were playing Marshalls on 10 and just playing great songs. They weren't, there was just something, there is something cool about that. And again, is that just my age? In in 100 years, will people be laughing about videos like this and saying, well, we all use these apps on our watch, smartwatches now for our gigs and we, we make music by doing this? <laughs> I just got an email from Sony for a new thing you wear on your wrist. And when you play the guitar, you can like trigger things. And, you know, it's all great, but I... I I, I grew up just hearing bands just, you know. You know? <laughs> Maybe that's terrible, I don't know. But I loved it. Now I, now I sound old. That's fine. Um. Okay, hi. The Prince and the many great amps were developed from thousands and thousands of hours of live stage sound in the band mix. Yeah. Yeah, they're classic. They're great. Princeton's great sounds awesome. Thank you, Thomas. I, I like it a lot. I know it's just a clean amp, but hey, it's a great amp. It's a great sound for me. My understanding is the Princeton was never meant to be a gigging amp. It's a student tube amp for homes. Oh, interesting. I think it was used a lot to record because it, because it can be driven at lower volumes, I think it records really well. I think back in those days, of course, these kind of amps would never have been used for gigging, Dan. You're absolutely right. Because you think about when the Beatles played at Shea Stadium, they didn't have huge PA systems to plug into. They, they used their amps, right? So amps used to be really loud so people could hear you on stage. And then you got to the stage where they would mic amps and put them through PA systems and things so amps could get quieter. You could, you could take this to Shea Stadium, mic it up, and play the gig, of course. So I think you're right in that regard. I like the Prince and the 12-inch speaker. I do like 12-inch speakers as well, but there is something really nice about this 10-inch speaker, Thomas. It makes it very punchy. I've tried other amps with 10-inch speakers that I didn't like, but the whole enclosure was smaller. I think the cabinet itself is really important. The wooden cabinet and the great cabinet and the speaker, they all and the transformer and the tubes and everything. It's all really important. The Princeton works great as a gigging amp when only the drums, bass, kick is mic. Yeah, more late to mic it. Yeah, I think, I think most people are miking. I actually just got from Amazon this uh, device. It's just like a hook that goes through the handle and holds a mic in front of it. And, you know, that's fine, isn't it? Why not do that anyway? Because it's just, you hook that through, you hang the mic there, you plug it into the PA, and you get that great mic sound anyway. So I, I would probably mic it up all the time if I was doing a band gig. I stay in that happy place between zero and one, right where it finally has enough juice to be heard. So you like it real clean, do you, Pooh? Any of our seven of my Super Twin Reverb only affects the very back of the Coliseum. <laughs> well, one on your Super, on your Twin Reverb is gonna be like 10 on my regular amp, right? Crazy. They, I, I'd love to own one, but I just I would never take it anywhere. I might get a 68 reissued Deluxe for gigging. Yes, the Deluxe is another great amp, which is now available hand-wired. And I hear that's got more headroom. That's a better amp for gigging. So the Deluxe would be really cool to have as well. I don't know why I got the Princeton. I think I got it just because I'd heard so much about it at the time. But I'd love, I'd love the Deluxe. And sometimes I think maybe I should have got the Deluxe for the higher headroom. Bimo, thanks for joining me. See you next time. Thanks for your support, as always. If we had the answer to that, we'd be rich, yeah? I made mine to a head. It's still... Oh, that's cool. Can you send a picture over? Here's my email. I'd like to see that. Yes, please throw some thumbs up. And if you're new here, please subscribe and ring the bell. I'd really appreciate it.
Even my draw of zombie into a 412 clean has that something you can't describe. Yep. I noticed that the other week with the FM3. I'm not sure if I'm keeping my FM3. It's a great unit. It's a bit limited by the foot switches for me, but I plugged that into the Synergy effects send return, return, and it sounded great. I was like, wow, it sounds really, really great because all it's doing is sending the preamp in, the, you know, the, the tone of the preamp into, again, the tubes and the cab and the speaker. So that's definitely, definitely what it is. Thomas Moore, what about the Iridium? That looks easier to use than a Stomp and has Fender Marshall and Vox and IRs. So I tried one. I did a quick review on my channel. I didn't love it. I thought the core tones were very good and it had that simplicity. Of course, the problem is at that point, is it not better to get a Stomp with all the other stuff in it as well? And the thing, the thing that I didn't like about the Iridium for me is that the lead channel with the Marshall kind of sound wasn't aggressive enough. And I don't even like heavy... Like, I don't play metal, and for me it wasn't aggressive enough, so it didn't really work for me. Um, but I did think it was cool. I think it's a great option for some people that have a pedal board and amp already and just need a way to go direct and, for, and don't want anything else. They don't want to deal with anything else. They just want that, and I think it was cool. But I would like to see a new version with more channel, like maybe a heavier channel. I'd also like to see Strymon release something which is a more of a multi-effects. But I think, it, I think it's a very niche product. I think, like I said, it's for someone that has a pedal board already, doesn't need any other, and doesn't want any other effects or MIDI switching or anything. They just want an amp emulator. And I think for that, it's a cool product. And I really like the cleans, and I like the kind of uh, mid-gain sounds. But some things, it's weird with me, sometimes I don't get enough amp gain from some products. I've noticed that with a few amps as well. Like the, the heavy channels are not aggressive enough. And that's weird that I say that because I don't even play metal, so I don't know. But it's a good product. Strymon make really good stuff, and I would consider that. But I would seriously consider, do I want that, or do I want something like an HX Stomp? Um, I'd like to try the Amp 1. Me too, Poo Ninja. I have tried one before briefly, and I kind of got the same feeling that maybe, although it's got a tube in there, it's still kind of solid state based, and it still doesn't give me what I need. Um, but I'm going to try one again and, and put it up against the real amp because you see Thomas Blue comparing it to real amps on his channel and again it sounds great over the internet but in the room does it give you that same sound? I'm going to try that. So I'm going to try to get hold of one of those amp ones very soon to, to do that comparison. And my, fee my concern is that it won't but I want to, again, I need to try it. But I tried, I, like I said, I, I was working on a video which I haven't posted yet, of the power stage and also some other solid state options, which I might may or may not post, I haven't decided yet. But nothing, nothing even came close to the tube amps. It's just crazy. I was actually shocked. I was telling my friends on the phone, I'm shocked. I am shocked. I don't say that lightly. I'm very hard to impress with gear and I don't I don't get shocked about gear, but I was actually shocked how good, how different they are. It's incre it's actually incredible. Don't quote me on that. I'll get in trouble on the internet. <laughs> That's just how I feel. Thomas Moore, I sent back a Walrus Julia Chorus. Okay, I like the Walrus audio stuff. Oh, yes, they also make an amp simulation box now, so that could be worth checking out too. Any advice on speakers? I have the EV EV12 and a Fender concert, but it's way too heavy. The EV is £19 and amp is... See, a £72 amp, I just wouldn't do it. I used to only play combos and then recently I've been more into the heads like I've been thinking like I shouldn't use combos because even a 30 watt 112 combo is going to be around 40 50 pounds right I've been thinking lately why am I doing that I should get a head like let's let's say the the JP 2C Mesa head is 100 watts three channels because it's just a head it's like 35 pounds and then you can own Rather than one, say, one like big 212 cab, you could own two single cabs, two 1x12 cabs, which I now have. So you could take that head and those two cabs, and or you could take the head and one cab. It's more of a modular system. I think lately I'd be more inclined to do that. I would never take an amp out that's 72 pounds, Thomas. I just, I wouldn't, I, I just wouldn't do it. Even if it sounded 50 times better than everything else, I just wouldn't do it. I'd be miserable. And... Let me just clarify something though. When I do a band gig, I also provide PA. So I'm already taking 
two 10 inch speakers for vocals, two 8 inch speakers for monitors, a mixing console of some kind, a huge bag of cables that weighs about 20 pounds or more, lights. I'm already taking all that stuff. So for that, for then, for me to turn around and take an amp as well, it's kind of hell for me to do that. But the thing is, pardon my language, but the thing with the mod, that's why I got into the modelers. I just wanted to take like a Kemper and throw it on the floor, plug in the guitar and play. But it never gave me the feeling uh, of the amp. And that's not to say amps are perfect either, by the way. They're very directional. They're very heavy. They, 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 they don't always sound incredible. I'm not saying that they're a, a, a magical solution. But for my tests in this room, they really are incredible. And I'm looking forward to the day of playing a band gig where I can take something like a head and a cab, mic it through my PA, and, and try that out. I think I'm going to really enjoy it, like, like, like the old days. Um, in regards to speakers, I'm, I'm, I wish I could help you, but I'm not an expert on speakers at all. I, I've tried like the emulations, comparing the differences. I know like a V30 is good for... Uh, metal and stuff like that. I've tried the emulations here on my computer. I also believe that with those emulations, you can do a lot with EQ as well. Um, cabs are very new to me. I've always just used what comes in my amp. I'm not really even one to chain speakers and stuff like that. Whatever is in the Fender here is very cool, and you can Google that. Um, yeah, that's a new. This this is such a new area to me that I don't know. And the other problem is I feel like different cabs work better with different amps. So you really have to try the amp. You really have to do that experiment for yourself to know. Unless, unless you're very experienced in that stuff. So um, I don't want to give you the wrong advice. So I don't know. Um, like I said, what I'm doing now is I'm using two 112 cabs. It'd be cool if one was open back and one was closed back. Both of mine are closed back. But it'd be cool to have a few cabs and then mix and match and try out what sounds the best for different situations. That's what I would do. But yeah, if you find something, let me know. Oh, Poon Ninja sent a picture. I'm going to show it to you. Roadies. Well, BMO, you know, if you've got roadies, that's wonderful. I don't have roadies yet. I have no roadies. I have no groupies. So, <laughs> oh man, this is great. I'm going to show you live uh, Poo Ninja's amp on the screen. Speakers are not returnable, says Thomas. Yeah, like I said, this is all new to me, so that's not something I can give you advice on. Maybe someone in the chat can, can give you some advice. Um, it, it, what I do know is that the speakers make such a crazy difference, don't they? They really do. Like when you, when you run through speaker emulations, and I'm not going to say they sound like the real thing, but you really realize, like, wow, like a V30 is so radically different. And it's like when you're playing around with the Helix um, native and stuff like that and changing the cabs, it's like, well, they sound really different. And of course, the mics they use and distance and everything also sounds radically different. But just the speakers alone, just changing a speaker and a cab can give you a whole new sound. That's a whole new rabbit hole for me. All right, this is from Poo Ninja. <laughs> Let me make it big. How did you do that? How did you make it into a head? That's crazy. I've never seen that. Am I be, am I being am I being silly here? Why have I never seen that before? Super twin reverb. When I think of a twin a fender twin reverb, I think of the big combo. Here's a used one on musician's friend. Let me see. Yeah. When I think of a twin reverb. When I think, oh, I'm trying to, I can't grab the picture. When I think of a twin reverb, I think of this. Musician's friend will not let me take the picture for some reason. Um, you know, I think of a big, like this one here. I, I'm, I'm, there we go, I can take this one. When I think of a twin reverb, I think of a big uh, combo amp, big cabinet. It will not let me take the picture. Of all the times, musician's friend, thank you. I think of a big combo. I've never seen a head. It's okay. Did they ever sell the heads, or is this just something that you've made yourself? Because that's really cool, and I'd love to know how you did it. Because it's actually something I never thought of before a twin reverb head. 
would be really, really cool. Okay, here's a picture from Sweetwater. And good old Sweetwater will let me take the picture. That's why you should always shop at Sweetwater, by the way. Um, I always think of this when I think of a twin reverb. Man, that's a great amp. I, I'll never forget that day, plugging into this amp. And just like, wow. And I love the built-in kickstand. I love everything about it. If I had roadies, I would have that twin reverb on stage and I would be so happy. I might even have, you know, that and, and another amp for heavy stuff, but that's a great, for cleans, it's just, it's, it's incredible. So yeah, what you've done here is you've made the head. That's very cool. You've taken that top section and just made a head, right? You did that yourself. Very cool. Thanks for sharing that. It's fantastic. Um, pretend to be Steve Tyler. Six, six L6 power tubes. That's another thing. Power tubes all make a difference, right? Again, this is all new to me, so I'm not going to comment, but all I know is the tubes sound great. It says 495 peak music power on the back. Wow. That is loud. And remember, watts is not all about volume. They always say that a 100 watt head and a 50 watt head, it's not like double the volume. Not at all. It's a few dBs louder. But you get more clean headroom. So you can run it to 10 and it won't break up. It won't start to distort. That's what they mean. So if you play in a Shadows cover band, you're going to use a, an amp with high headroom. And that's why they use amps like that. But you might not want that. You might want that sound where it starts to break up. Like on here on 6, like I said earlier, you get that sound. You might want that. That's real amp distortion. You might want that sound. And then I never did this thing where you roll the volume back on the guitar. People roll back the volume, you get less, less sound hitting the amp, you get a cleaner sound. Whenever I do that, I tend to also get less volume. So it's never really worked for me, but a lot of people will do that. So you roll the volume down to say five, and then when you play... There's your clean, you turn it up, you go to your bridge pickup. And there's your crunchy stone sound. I was clipping there, but yeah. So that's another really cool thing with the, the tube amps that you can do. All right, Thomas Moore says, I used to have an old silver face twin, really clean and loud. Eric Johnson has two. Up there. See, there you go, that'd be cool. It's not pretty up close, drawing his skull loose. Yeah, but it's a cool mod. I'm, I'm all into that. I, know, I don't do things like that, but it's, I like seeing other people do it. So, that's my review. It's a great amp. Like I said, um, I don't know which Princeton you should get. And check out the Deluxe as well, because the Deluxe is a great amp. I want to try that too. But I guess, in summary... I just want to say, like, if you're struggling with sound, if you're if you're using emulations and not being very satisfied and spending a lot of time tweaking, um, you're not feeling very inspired. I've, I've, I'm really happy I did this. I made a little pedal board, like I made a video about this little battery powered pedal board with a few real pedals and a looper on there, and the real amp. And I can just sit and play for hours. Just that I can actually just sit here for. I'm not, I'm not being. I'm not being over the top. I could just sit here for hours, and I do, and just play this sound uh, as it is. I love it, especially, I mean, the headphones is great too, but in the room, again, even better. And to me, that's the equivalent of playing a great acoustic guitar. When I get a great acoustic guitar, I just sit and I just strum. I don't, okay, I do plug in my acoustic guitars, but the bass tone of that acoustic is what I listen for, right? I just want a great sounding acoustic, and I'll just sit and play that for hours. For me, that's what I get from the real amp. I just get a great bass tone. And when I say bass, I don't mean bass guitar. I mean just a great sound, and I just sit and play it. And that's what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for millions of effects and tweaking and stuff. Some people are, but I'm not. Um, I just want a great sound, and that's a great place to start. And then like we were saying earlier, Thomas Moore was saying, you can then add something like an HX effects in the loop just for your delays and reverbs, just to spice things up a little bit. And then you can play John Mayer riffs all day long. <laughs> so 
Highly, highly, highly recommend it. Really enjoying it. Also enjoying other amps as well. I did a video on the Synergy, which is also a great amp, and that has the three channels, the 30 watts. Once you get into amps, it's a whole new world, right? It can get very costly, and it's... I mean, there's millions of amps, but if you are looking at a Princeton, I, highly, this, I really highly recommend this amp. I put a link below to my Sweetwater affiliate, which you can use either for this amp or anything you buy at Sweetwater. I will get a commission, so I put that there. And definitely check out the non-handwired version. It's half the price. I haven't tried it, but I'm sure it's really good as well. And hopefully I'll have some more of these on the show in the future, and maybe some other amps too. I definitely don't want to go crazy with amps. I haven't got the space here, as you can see, but I would love to have a few really great amps for different styles that I play through, and then an amp, like, like a 100-watt amp that I use in a band at a gig. That would be really cool. And then maybe I'll do a video on integrating something like the HX effects into a real amp just for those um, time-based effects and changing the channels and stuff like that. But... To conclude, if you're feeling frustrated, if you're down many rabbit holes these days with the digital stuff, just grab a great amp. If you play cleans on a Strat or a Tele, just get a Princeton. I think you're going to really appreciate the, the back to basics approach of it. If you play metal, maybe look at something else, of course. But um, yeah, it's been very, very refreshing for me and very... I'll say it again, I was, I was telling people, I was shocked at the, diff the difference. Like, I just love it. And it's, it's dangerous because now, if I have to use in-ears, I'm going to say, well, I won't have my amp with me. It's not, it's kind of a step backwards in a way. But I'm really glad today that people watching also own amps. That's really cool. There's too many people these days saying, I sold, I bought a Helix and sold all my amps. It's nice to me to know that other people are still enjoying amps as well. And it's, it's, it's a great thing. And, and like I said, the whole thing of using the moldy effects with the real amp is kind of a cool approach too. All right. Biscuit joinery is strong and light. Now I'm hungry, Bimo. I might have a cabin maker make me a nice box after it's up and running again. Did they ever, did they ever make a twin head? Bend the twin head. Did they ever make that? Oh, they did. The basement 80. Yeah. Here we go. I found one on Reverb. I'm going to show it to you. <gasps> I mean, why didn't they make... Why is this rare? Why didn't they make these? Let me show this to you. Before I go. Because a, a twin Reverb head would save you the weight. It I mean, it's still way the same. If you take a speaker cabinet and a head, it's the same thing as taking a combo, but it's obviously physically split into two, so then you can carry that around with you. Here's one. Let me just see if I can share my screen here, because here's one on Reverb. Look at this. This is, this is now sold, but this was a Fender Twin Reverb head, so you, the cabinet is separate, so you can take two trips to the gig and not one, and you're going to have less weight, obviously, because you're, you're cutting it in half. This is what Poo Ninja did. But this is cool, look. Now I'm wondering why Fender don't make these. Someone's probably going to tell me the reason, but if you could buy the head and it weighs half the weight and you can actually carry the thing and plug it into a speaker cabinet, why not? I wonder if this was a real thing or if someone made this. Remember, the, the Twin is not perfect for everyone. It does cleans really well. It's not, it's not going to be for metal players, things like that. But for if you play a lot of country and clean stuff, it's really, really cool. Maybe this was made by... Maybe this was made custom like Poo Ninja made one. I don't know. Thomas Moore says, I bet Mojo Tone makes a head to put one in. Well, I don't know what this is. I'll have to ask Fender if I see them at Summer Nam, but... Now, now you got me thinking, what a great idea to have a head. I'm trying to find the weight here, but to have a head only of the twin, and then you can carry that in, like I said, especially if they put like an IR, load, an IR loader in there as well. You take the head in, you take the cab in, you connect the two together, and you have a twin <laughs> without having to carry a twin by itself. Because a twin by itself is very, very heavy. I'm not sure exactly what, what they weigh. I'm just going to check here on Sweetwater. 
Don't forget they make a solid state version as well. I'd love to try that, but I just have this feeling that it won't sound as good as the tube version. But again, I'm just surmising. I don't know. The Fender Twin Reverb is $1,700. And it weighs... I'm not going to buy one. £64. Actually, it's not terrible. I'm not that strong, but it's not bad. Sweetwater have a limited edition lightweight wine red version which weighs 56 pounds. Have you ever, have you ever seen that? It's 85 watts, two channels, 56 pounds is actually not that bad at all. And it's a big cab with two speakers. It's, the, it's an, oh, it's a Neo version. So the Neo speakers are lighter, that's why. Are they as good? Again, I don't know, I'd have to try it. I love the fact they have a built-in kickstand on those things as well. I think that's really cool. Let me just show that to you before I go. Look at that. That's nice. This is a Sweetwater version. Fender 65 Twin Reverb Neo 212 85 Watt Tube Combo. I mean, you know, you get something like that and you plug in a great Strat or Tele and you just... Everything is right in the world, isn't it? You have that, something like that on stage. Look at that. I mean, the two speakers, the huge open back cabinet, it's, it's got to sound great. Is it as good as the regular version? This one? The standard black is the same price. It weighs more. Is it better? I don't know. Again, you'd have to compare them, but... You know what? Actually, if I was getting a twin reverb, I might just get the real thing. Yeah. I wouldn't mess around with different speakers. I would just get this. Look at that. That's the real deal. And I would get the rolling cart as well to take it into the gig. <laughs> 190 bucks just to, just to carry the thing. No, actually, I have one of these. It's great. When you're taking PA and everything, you just put everything on there and stack it right up high and you push it in. It's definitely worth it. Yeah, I have a multi-cart. Rock and roller it's called. All right, I'm going to wrap things up. But thanks for watching. I hope you like the amp. Let me know what you think. I don't know how it's sounded out there. Um, in on your on your devices if you watch these videos try to wear headphones remember you're watching through YouTube today was in 4k so you can watch it in 4k and really hear it but once again it's not about what you're hearing today it's about the sound in the room and that goes for all amps sounds great in the room but this is cool I recommend it if you're looking for an, an amp like this I highly highly recommend it I put the link below in the description of Sweetwater so let me just read the last comments and I'm going to wrap things up um, the cab with speakers and amp removed isn't too bad, but the massive transformer amps are, yeah. But they say the transformers are what makes the sound. Neo speakers, you're right, Thomas, yeah. And Poo Ninja says the kickstands are great. Yeah, all amps should have a kickstand built in, but the thing about amps I've found is once you put them on the floor or on the kickstand, lean back or on a table, that completely changes the sound, doesn't it? Which is kind of crazy as well. Lots, lots to consider. All right, I'm going to wrap things up. If you're new here, please subscribe, ring the bell. I'll be live on Sunday playing my cover songs. Oh, Victor, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. My birthday's in a couple of weeks, and I'd love to hit 10,000 subscribers. That'd be great. So if you've got any friends that might, might enjoy this, please share it with them or any forums or anything. Please share it there. Um, I have booked a trip to Summer Nam, and I'll be reporting on Summer Nam. I'm 90% going, so that should be happening. And there's some cool stuff there now in Nashville. They've got the Gibson Garage just opened. They've got Mesa amps there and all the Gibsons there. And who knows what we'll see at Summer Nam. Of course, with the pandemic, a lot of things now have gone up in price and on back order. I'm not expecting to see many new things, but hopefully we'll see a few cool things at the Nam show in the summer. Have a great week and keep making music. That's right, Poo Ninja. Remember, the most important thing here is to play, write music, and be inspired. And um, I wanted to make this video today just to say that the real amp has definitely inspired me to start um, writing some riffs and a few little things. So I think that's a good. I think that makes it completely worth it. Thomas Moore, thanks for being here. Appreciate it. Nice show tonight. Great sound amp too. Thank you. Fantastic. Everyone, take care. Be well. Thanks for tuning in. I really appreciate it. I'll see you on the next stream. Uh, ring the bell and you'll see when I post a new video or go live. All right. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.